Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. Alrighty, let's get into those structural proteins in a bit more detail. First up, the ones you'll find outside the animal cell membrane. Collagen and elastin are examples of structural proteins found in the extracellular matrix. They're both long fibrous or sheet-like proteins, but they have very different structures. Collagen is the most common structural protein. It consists of three polypeptide chains twisted around each other in a helix. Collagen forms wide fibers and provides strength and structure to tissues, tendons, ligaments, and bones. Just like this wide, triple helix tree trunk provides strength and structure to hold up the sketchy treehouse. Now, elastin is a thinner fibrous protein, more loosely packed in a mesh structure. Elastin allows the arteries, skin, and other tissues to stretch and contract without tearing. This high elasticity bungee cord represents elastin because we sure hope it will also stretch and contract without tearing. Did I say hope? I mean, no. We definitely tested that thing. All right, while that completely safe and totally not in any danger kid dangles there, let's move into the cell where we'll see the three different structural protein filaments of the cytoskeleton. First, we've got actin. Actin monomers often assemble into microfilaments, which have multiple functions in the cell from cell movement to cell signaling. Actin microfilaments are important parts of the cytoskeleton, and this thin rebar holding up the treehouse looks just like a microfilament made of those globular actin subunits. Let's hope it supports and protects those kids the same way that microfilaments support and protect our cells. No promises, though. Each end of a microfilament has a different structure, which we call microfilament polarity. One end is positive because the actin's positively charged polar side faces out. The other end is negative because actin's negatively charged side faces out. Hence, these positive and negative symbols on the rebar. The plus end typically assembles and disassembles faster than the minus end, which is useful to know because actin microfilaments can be transient or permanent structures. Keratin is our next structural protein. It's an example of an intermediate filament, which makes up a good portion of the cytoskeleton. Keratin is often found in a shape called a coiled coil, a protein structure that occurs when two alpha helices twist together. You may have also heard that keratin makes up our nails and hair, which is why we've represented keratin with this carrot-eating kid with luscious, coiled hair. Now, more on those intermediate filaments in the cytoskeleton. Intermediate filaments, such as keratin, look like rope because their protein fibers are woven together into a tetramer. A tetramer is a structure made from four similar molecules bound together. We've represented intermediate filaments with this ropey spider web because these proteins form a thick, web-like structure throughout the cytoplasm. And just like intermediate filaments hold organelles in place, this spider web looks like it could detain a small child. Tubulin is the final type of structural protein we'll review. Like actin, tubulin can form transient or permanent structures called microtubules, which, you guessed it, join up with microfilaments and intermediate filaments for a powerhouse of a cytoskeleton. Since microtubules are hollow, tube-like structures, they're represented by this sweet tube slide, which is primed for cellular materials, I mean, kids, to start gliding along. Microtubules have another similarity to actin microfilaments. They have plus ends and minus ends. For microtubules, the minus end sticks out around the nucleus, like the negative handlebar at this slide's treehouse entrance. The plus end reaches out towards the cell membrane, like this positive screw at the bottom. So I just mentioned that tubulin is a structural protein that forms microtubules. Now, let's zoom in a bit on this microtubule tube slide situation to take a closer look. Tubulin proteins pair up into what's known as dimers. Dimers consist of one alpha tubulin bound to one beta tubulin. At the microtubule's minus end, the alpha tubulin is exposed just like this kid right underneath that minus sign safety bar. Huh, safety. It's no wonder they're screaming, Alpha! At the microtubules plus end, you can see someone actually survived this thing? Wow, 
Legal will be thrilled. This kid has beta shoelaces because beta tubulin is exposed at the microtubules plus end, where new tubulin dimers are added. That takes care of structural proteins.